Sutra, how the Buddhas in the past made great vows to appear in the world, and how for living beings they eradicated suffering and afflictions, and how all those lines of discourse perfected continuity of practice, and so obtained sameness with the Buddhas and the state of all wisdom. How they saw in the past that all lines among people sent out great nets of light. Universally illumining walls of the ten directions, how they thought and made this vow: I should be a lamp for worms, perfect the Buddha's merit and virtue, the ten powers and all wisdom, all the many living beings, the blaze with greed, hatred and stupidity, I should save and liberate, destroying suffering in the evil paths. Having made such vows as these. They were solid and unretreating, perfected cultivation of bodhisattva conduct, and acquired ten powers of non-obstruction. After making vows like these, never faltering in cultivation, what they did was not in vain, and so they are called lions. Within the single worthy compound of the thousand Buddhas to appear, all their universal eyes I shall describe in succession. As within the worthy compound, the meekest compass are the same. Those future Buddhas conduct I shall speak of in detail. As in one seed of Buddha Shetras, the meekest Shetras are the same. A future ten powered honored ones conducts I now. Tell you, commentary. Universal worthy Bodhisattva continues to restate his meaning in verses, saying, "I describe for you as well how the Buddhas in the past made great vows to appear in worlds to teach and transform the living beings in them, and how for living beings they eradicated suffering and afflictions. I tell you how they managed." To rid all living beings of every kind of suffering and difficulty, and I describe for you all those how all those lions of discourse perfected continuity of practice, how they keep up their practices until they were completely perfected, and so obtained sameness with the Buddhas, so they came to have dharma doors identical with those of all Buddhas. And the state of all wisdom, ultimate all wisdom. I also tell you about how they saw in the past that all lands among people, the Buddhas sent out great nets of light, universally illumining worlds of the ten directions. I tell you too how they all Buddhas thought and made this vow: I should be a bright lamp for worlds, perfect the Buddha's merit and virtue. The ten powers of a Buddha and all wisdom, all the many living beings who are ablaze with great hatred and stupidity, as if on fire, I shall save and liberate it, and liberate, destroying suffering in the evil paths. I should make it so they don't have to suffer in the three evil destinies. I also tell you about how having made such vows as these. They, all Buddhas, when they were Bodhisattvas, were solid and unretreating, and unretreating. After they made their great vows, they were unflinching and never turned back from them. Therefore, they perfected cultivation of Bodhisattva conduct, all the doors of practice that Bodhisattvas cultivate, and acquired ten kinds of powers. Of interpenetration and non-obstruction, after making vows like those, never faltering in cultivation, what they did was not in vain, and so they are called lions. They never even considered turning back, as they cultivated every single bodhisattva path. Everything they undertook came to a success successful conclusion, and they are now called accomplished Buddhas. Within the single worthy kampa of the thousand Buddhas to appear in the world during that period called the worthy kampa, all their universal eyes among them, there is one Bodhisattva called Universal Eye Bodhisattva, whom I shall describe in succession. 
I'll tell you about him in particular as within the single period of the worthy Kampa, they meet these Kampas are the same, those future Buddhas conduct and how they are going to cultivate. I now shall speak of in detail for you, as is one seed of Buddha Shetras, which are many as find most of dust. They meet these Shetras with their world systems, many as find most of dust are the same. The limitless are like the one, and of their future ten powered honored ones conducts. The practice is cultivated by their Buddhas, who are endowed with the ten powers I am now going to tell you. There are just a few hours left in the transaction. If you all apply your efforts well, you can have last minute accomplishment, and then you won't have endured the code. The hunger and the difficulty in vain. Whether you've obtained advantages from the three weeks of Chan meditation you've just gone through is as when someone drinks water and knows himself whether it is warm or cold. I speak a verse for closing the session for you, and if you investigate according to it, you should be able to open some enlightenment. The verse goes. This year on this day, as we close the turn seven, those who seek fame and profit will go east and west. To stick out both legs and close both eyes is what the patriarch told the parrot to escape the cage. Today we are ending the three weeks of turn meditation sessions and those who wish to seek fame can run off to the east, while those who seek benefit can rush to the west. That means they'll be scattered in the pursuit of fame and profit. But if that's what they want to do, you won't pay any t attention to them, and they can do as they please. We should remember how when the patriarch Bodhidharma uh, first came to China, he wasn't able to cross over any pupil, but then he met a parrot that could talk and that asked but the patriarch how it could get out of its cage. The patriarch told it to get out of the cage, to get out of the cage, stick out four legs and close both your eyes. That will enable you to get out of the cage. To get out of the cage, to get out of the cage, stick out your legs and close both your eyes. That will enable you to get out of the cage. Now that we are finishing the transitions, if you want to end death and throw off birth, you should always stick out both legs and close your eyes. That was the Svetin method that Patriarch Bodhidharma taught the parrot. If after the sessions we feel we're still not out of the cage, we should constantly employ this expedient Dharma door to escaping from it. Sutra All Buddha's successive appearances in the world, according to their vows and according to their names, according to the predictions they receive, and according to their lifespans, according to the proper Dharma cultivated by them, as they intently seek the way of non obstruction according to the living beings they teach, as their proper dharma dwells within the world, according to the Buddha Shetras that they purify, the living beings as well as the dharma wills, the times and the non times for proclamations, in purifying flocks of beings progressively. According to all karma of living beings, their actions and their faith and understandings, differing in great superior, middling, or inferior, transforming them so that they cultivate. How they enter into wisdoms such as those, cultivate those most surpassing conducts, always do the deeds of universal worthy, vastly rescue all living beings. How their body karma meets with no obstruction, how the karma of their speech is also pure, as they are to the workings of their minds and how none are not that way in the three terms. Bodhisattva conducts such as those which make ultimate the universal worthy way, so the pure wisdom sun arises, and 
universally shines throughout the drama realm, and all compass of the future with more countries than mere words can tell. In one single thought, are known completely, yet no discriminations made about them. The practitioner can tend towards and enter grounds like those the most supreme. Or of all these bodhisattva dramas, I will speak a minute portion. How, with wisdom which has no bounds or limits, one penetrates the Buddha states, while entering into all of them without retreating, as one cultivates and perfects the universal worthy wisdoms, completing all of universal worthy vows, and entering incomparable wisdom. I shall talk about this conduct. Commentary: Universal worthy Bodhisattva continues by saying he will describe all Buddha's successive appearances one after the other in words, according to their vows made in the past and according to their names, the titles due them, along with according to the predictions they receive and according to their lifespans, those of the Bodhisattvas and of all living beings. He will also tell about them, according to the proper drama cultivated by them, how in every single location they teach and transform beings and cultivate and practice the orthodox methods as they single-mindedly and intently seek with diligence the way of perfectly fields into penetration and non-obstruction. He will also discuss the successive Buddhas according to the living beings they are supposed to teach as their proper dharma dwells within the world. They make sure that the proper dharma is always present in the world. He will describe them too. According to the Buddha Shachas that they adorn and purify as they go everywhere and the living beings they teach and transform, as well as the great dharma wheels they turn. He will tell about how they know the times and the non-times for proclamations, so when they speak dharma is just at the right time. They would never speak dharma at the time when dharma shouldn't, shouldn't be spoken in purifying flocks of beings progressively step by step. Universal worthy Bodhisattva says he will also tell about how all Buddhas teach according to the retributions coming from the created karma of all living beings, their actions, living beings' behavior, and their faith and understandings, what kind of faith the beings have given rise to, and what their understanding of the Buddha Dharma is. All of those are differing in grade. Some have superior good rules, while others' rules are middling or inferior. He will describe the transforming of them according to the living beings' potentials so that they cultivate the drama doors of um, obstructed interpenetration. He will tell how they enter into certification to wisdoms such as those discussed before, cultivate those most surpassing conduct doors of practice, how they always do the deeds of universal worthy so that all the karma they perform is exactly the same as that of universal worthy bodhisattva, vastly rescue all living beings. That's what all they do is for, to rescue living beings on vast scale. He will also tell about how their body karma is free of killing, stealing, or sexual misconduct, and so it meets with no obstruction. How the karma of their speech involves no loose, lying, harsh, or double-tongued talk, so it is also pure, as they are to the workings of their minds. There are none of the three poisons, greed, hatred, and stupidity, within their minds, and so their mental karma is pure. And he will discuss how none of the Buddhas are not that way in the three times, all past Buddhas, all present Buddhas and all future Buddhas become Buddhas in just that same way. The Bodhisattva conducts doors of practice as such as those just described, which make ultimate the dramas which universal worthy Bodhisattva cultivates as his way. So the pure light of wisdom which is like the sun arises and universally shines on all living beings throughout the Dharma realm and all compass of the future 
with more countries than mere words can tell. In one single thought, unknown completely, the Bodhisattva can know all of those states in just one thought. Yet knowing them, he is able to be so that no discriminations are made about them. The cultivator and practitioner can tend towards and enter states of grounds like those, which are the most supreme positions. Of all these bodhisattva dramas, I would speak a minute portion. Universal worthy says in his verses, "Universal worthy bodhisattva continues to say, 'I will describe how, with wisdom which has no bounds, only meets one penetrates the Buddha states.'" While entering into all of them, all of those days without retreating as one cultivates, the Bodhisattva always presses forward in his cultivation, and he never gives up or turns back, and so he perfects the universal worthy wisdoms. He comes to have all of the wisdoms with which universal worthy Bodhisattva is endowed, completing all of universal worthy's vows. The great vows made by universal worthy bodhisattva, and entering incomparable wisdom, which nothing can match, I now shall talk to you about how to cultivate this door of conduct. Sutra, in one single moat of dust, are completely seen all wounds. If living beings should hear about them, their minds would be confused and go insane. As within a single mold of dust, so too it is in every mold of dust. All wound systems enter within them. It is in that way inconceivable. In every particle of dust, are dramas of the ten directions and three times. The destinies and treasures are all limitless, yet can be known with all their differences. In every particle of dust, are limitless kinds of Buddha treasures. Of their various kinds, only meatless. Not a single one remains unknown. Everything within the drama realm, with all the varying characteristics and types of destinies, each having differences, can all be discerned and known. With wisdom, to deeply enter the fine and subtle, all world systems are distinguished in detail. The coming into being and destruction of each kampa can be completely understood and described. All kampas, whether long or short, are known, and the three periods of time in just one thought, with practices of being alike or not the same, all can be known completely in detail. Deep entry can be made into all worlds, vast and great, or else not vast and great. One body for the mythic shetras. And one shetra for the meekest bodies, all existing in the ten directions, world with systems of the varying kinds, vast and great with the meekest appearances, can be entirely known. Every one within each of the three periods of time, for all the countries without limit, through endowments with deep, profound wisdom, the creations and destructions can all be known. Commentary: In one single mode of dust are completely seen or wounds, whatever. If living beings should hear about them, they wouldn't believe it, or else would do a lot of doubting to point that their minds would be confused and they would go insane about how so many world systems could fit inside a tiny particle of dust. As within a single mode of dust. All lands and countries can appear. So too, it is in every mode of dust. It's possible for all world systems to appear in very single particular dust, just as they do in one dust particle. All world systems enter within them. As it happens in one, it happens in all. It is in that way inconceivable. The wonderful drama of this state cannot be conceptualized by thought or expressed in words. In every particle of dust, are dramas of the ten directions and three times, along with all Buddhas and all the Sangha of the ten directions and the three periods of time. The destinies and treasures are all limitless. The entire wheel of rebirth is present, with the six paths, the good, the two good destinies of humans and gods, and the four evil destinies of asuras. 
health beings, hungry ghosts, and animals. Each of them is limitless, and so are all the Shatra lands, yet they can be known with all their differences. The Bodhisattva can know all of those days very clearly and precisely. In every particle of dust are limitless kinds of Buddha Shatras. Buddha lands have their differences too. There are world systems that face upwards and world systems that, that are overturned. Some are long and some are short. Some world systems are round in shape while others are square in outline. The world systems differ and the Buddha Shatras do too. Of their various kinds of aspects and appearances, only meekless and boundless, not a single one remains unknown. There isn't any kind of Buddha Shatra or any state that is not known about. Everything all state whatsoever within the drama realm, with all the varying characteristics and types of destinies, which are having differences, can be all discerned and known. They can all be known with their individual differences. With wisdom to deeply enter the fine and subtle in all minute particulars, the states of all world systems are distinguished in detail. The coming into being, dwelling, and destruction followed by disappearance of each compa with how they all happen can be completely understood and described with precision. precision. All compass, whether long, if the compass is long or short, if the compass lasts a short time, unknown, and the three periods of time in just one thought, if elaborated, the three periods of time unfold, but contracted, the three periods of time are just a single thought, with practices of living beings which are like or else not the same, all can be known completely in detail. Deep entry can be made into all worlds, whether the world systems are vast and great, or else not vast and great, they can all be known. One body being adequate for answering limitless Buddha Shatras, and one Shatra adequate for entering limitless bodies. All existing in the ten directions, world systems of the varying kinds vast and great with limitless appearances, can be entirely known everyone. The Bodhisattva can know them can know them all. Within each of the three periods of time for all the countries, but the Buddha lands without limit through endowment with deep profound wisdom. The creations and destructions can all be known. How all lands throughout the three periods of time come into being, dwell, decay, and pass away can be totally known very accurately and distinctly. Sutra, all world systems of the ten directions, whether coming into being or decaying, being in that way ineffably many, worthy ones of virtue deeply comprehend. There are either lands and countries with various adornments as their grounds. And all the destinies are also thus. It is all because of karma being pure, or else there are world systems which have all types of filth mixed in. This too is evoked by living beings. All is as is their conduct. When limitless and boundless shetras are understood to be just one single shetra, in that way there is entry to all shetras. Their number more than can be known. All world systems, each and every one, completely enter into one Shetra, yet the world systems do not become one, and moreover, they are not confused. World systems are either upright or inverted. They may be high or else they may be low. All of this is thinking on the part of beings and can be known completely in detail. Extensive as world systems are and so limitless and boundless, the various kinds are known to be just one, and the one is known to be the various kinds. All Buddhist disciples of Universal Worthy can, using Universal Worthy's wisdom, understand and know all Shetra's number, even though that number has no bounds. They can know the transformations of all worlds, Shetra's transformations and living beings' transformations, Dharma's transformations and all Buddha's transformations. 
all of this to the utmost point, and how for every system of worlds, for all minutes or vast and great treasures, the various differing kinds of decorations, all arise completely due to karma. Commentary on world systems of the ten directions, whether they are coming into being or else decaying and going empty, there being in that way inevitably many of those world systems, worthy ones of virtue can deeply and clearly comprehend. There are either lands and countries with various adornments as their grounds. They have wonderfully ornamented appearances. And all the destinies are also thus. There are all sorts of adornments found in each of the destinies as well. This all because of karma being pure. Because the karma of the living beings in those countries is pure, every single ground within them is adorned. Or else there are world systems which have all types of filth mixed in. Some worlds have every type of defilement in them. This too is evoked by the power of karma of living beings. If defined karma predominates, the living beings with will inhabit a polluted country. If in living beings karma is for the most part pure, then the country will be pure. If living beings if karma is in the majority, then good will be slight. And if the greater proportion is good karma, then evil will be less. All is as is their conduct. Everything is determined by how living beings act. When all the limitless and boundless shetras understood to be just one single shetra, and one Buddha shetra is understood to be limitless and boundless, there are many Buddha shetras. In that way, there is entry to all Buddha shetras. Their number more than can be known. All world systems, each and every one, completely enter into one Buddha Shetra and are contained within it. Yet the world systems, even though they enter into a single world system, still remain clearly individualized and distinct. They do not become one when they enter one Buddha Shetra, and moreover, they are not confused. They don't get mixed up with each other nor do they get in each other's way. It remains clearly separate, and the world systems in no way interfere with or obstruct each other. World systems are either upright or inverted. Some world systems face upwards, and some face downwards. They may be high world systems, or else they may be low. All of this, the different ways the worlds may be, is brought about due to the false thinking on the part of living beings. The worlds that appear are like the living beings' false thoughts. And for the Bodhisattva, this can be known completely and in exact detail. Extensive as world systems are, and so limitless and boundless, the various kinds are known to be just one. All world systems, be they broad or narrow, expansive or confined, even though so limitless and boundlessly, many in number are known to be just one world system, and the one is known to be the various kinds of world systems. All Buddhist disciples of universal worthy Bodhisattva can, using, using universal worthy Bodhisattva's kind of wisdom, understand and know all Shetra's number, the number of all Shetra's, even though that number has no bounds. That number even comes to an end. They can know the transformations of all worlds as they change, along with Shetra's transformations and living beings' transformations which keep happening all the time. They can also know Dharma's transformations, that is, what is supposed to come about, and all Buddha's transformations effected through their spiritual powers. All of this taken to the utmost point, and they can also know for know how for every system of worlds, for all minutes and subtle or else vast and great Buddha Shetras throughout the ten directions, the various differing kinds of decorations all arise completely due to karma created by living beings.